This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, May the 13th, 2019. Well, it's the feast of Our Lady of Fatima, and Our Lady's appearances to three young children in a field in rural Portugal, it isn't an isolated event. In 1531, Our Lady appeared to Juan Diego in Guadalupe in Mexico. She appeared in Quito, Ecuador the next century. There were some low-profile appearances, and things got started in earnest in 1830 in France. She appeared to Catherine Labore in Paris, then to two children at La Salette 16 years later, then it was Lourdes in 1858, and then Pomain in 1871, then Knock Ireland around the same time. And all of those appearances painted a similar picture. Sin and error were on the rise and souls were in danger. We need to pray the rosary and we need to do penance on behalf of sinners. Also, the end of the world may well be close at hand and we need to act like it. Each of those visits was important. Each of them brought something to the table, whether it was the miraculous metal or Lourdes water. At Fatima, though, Our Lady made things plainer. She was more specific. She made predictions. Again, there was the call for the rosary and for penance, and then she revealed three secrets. And as promised, she worked the most public, most recorded, the most miracle-like miracle in the history of the world. That was October the 13th. 1917. Our Lady of Fatima was the supernatural grounding for Catholicism in the West in the first half of the 20th century. When the hot water ran out, the Catholic response was, offer it up. When a Catholic faced some trauma or trial and didn't know what to say in prayer, the universal response was, pray the rosary. And while many have blamed the massive collapse of the church in the West on Vatican II, it could just as easily be blamed on the disastrous choice of so many in the clergy to ignore, perhaps deliberately, the teaching of and devotion to Our Lady of Fatima. Even today, people flock there. The young who hear about Fatima for the first time are enamored. It's really hard to overstate how important her appearance to those three children in that field today in 1917 was for the Catholic faith in the West. Remember in 1981, it was on the feast of Our Lady of Fatima that Muhammad Ali Acha shot Pope St. John Paul II in St. Peter's Square. A month later, Pope John Paul stated forcefully that she had saved his life on that day. And while some chalk that up to being pious or saying what a pope is supposed to say, he wasn't talking about where the bullet hit him. He was actually talking about a series of blunders that he and many others believed were a second attempt on his life that day. You see, the pope had gone regularly to give blood so that his blood could be banked in case it was needed for anything. That blood was stored at the nearby Spiritus Santo Hospital. When John Paul was loaded into the ambulance, they drove right past Spiritu Santo, where the Pope's personal doctor was headed, and all the way across Rome to the Gemelli. There, the Pope was given a transfusion of tainted blood, and he contracted several conditions which dramatically slowed his healing. That's only one of a dozen blunders which the Pope described in interviews later that year. Finally, today in 1989 in China, large groups of students, numbering about 300,000, gathered in Tiananmen Square to begin a month-long hunger strike in support of pro-democracy campaigns across the country. The campaigns had been going on for a month already, but this hunger strike would prove to be the straw that broke the camel's back. Of course, the government was going out of their way to pretend that first these things weren't happening and then second to make sure that no one knew about them happening when they did take place. With the numbers so large, though, it was clear that there was nothing the government could do to explain that this was just a matter of ordinary course. And so the hunger strike opened the door to massive campaigns, which would ultimately have the most impact and effect in the West, which covered them in the media extensively. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.